I'm starting a new series where I talk about my five favorite film directors, and I'm starting the list with, in no particular order, with Sofia Coppola, daughter of famous, successful, and critically acclaimed director Francis Ford Coppola, director of The Godfather. But her style is nothing like her father. Sofia Coppola's style is definitely her own. And her movies are soft, delicate, and oftentimes have a feminine quality to it, thanks to it being from a female perspective. And even from a female perspective, it's still uniquely Sofia Coppola. It's unique to her own style. And there are other female directors out there, but this style is unique to just Sofia Coppola herself. And her movies usually deal with characters that are privileged and sheltered, hence more of the focus is on the psychological aspect of the characters. Usually they deal with loneliness, sometimes self-doubt, and other stuff like that. And very rarely are her movies about violent life or death situations. So let's start with The Virgin Suicides, her first feature-length film. Her first short film came before this, but The Virgin Suicides 1999 was her first movie, and it showed off everything that was a part of Sofia Coppola's style that she would explore further in all of her other movies. This is a mysterious movie, but it's not a mystery about life or death situations. It's a mystery about growing up. It's the mystery that you feel when you think about being an adult as a teenager, the kind of uncertainty that you have towards growing up. But it's also a mystery about these girls in the movie called the Lisbon sisters who are sheltered by their parents and their parents who are overprotective of them, do not really allow them to have any contact with the outside world. But this story isn't told from their perspective rather from the perspective of the neighborhood boys who are watching them from a distance. So it's really interesting how the movie is told from the perspective of these neighborhood boys and we never really know which part of the story is fact and which part of the story comes from their overactive imagination. Now these boys have a fascination towards the Lisbon sisters that really goes beyond any fascination a teenage boy would have towards the opposite gender in their age. Now, a little fascination is normal for that age, but these boys really take it to a whole new level. And if you truly immerse yourself in this movie, you are going to share that same fascination with these boys throughout the entire runtime. And the whole movie is just uncovering the mystery of who these girls are, since they are always in their houses. Rarely does anybody see them make an appearance. There's almost like a mythology that builds around these girls, almost like there's some kind of distant fairy tale character. And a lot of times it's the imagination of these neighborhood boys that really fill up the holes of the story. And over the course of the movie, it's like a mystery unfolding in front of your eyes, but a mystery of character and a mystery of these girls. The next film that Sofia Coppola did was Lost in Translation. This movie was the movie that propelled Sofia Coppola to director stardom. This movie was extremely popular and definitely a lot more commercially successful than The Virgin Suicides was. The Virgin Suicides was a box office bomb, but this movie managed to garner both critical and commercial success and I think really launched, helped launch the career of Sofia Coppola. And her style is back in this movie and you really see even from the first movie that she already nailed her style down. She knows the kind of style that she's going for and with this movie she builds a sense of location and a sense of a relationship that is very unique and this movie is set in Japan. So the sense of location really helps bring out a, a very special part of this film's identity and the actors in this movie are really good too. Bill Murray who always had a deadpan sense of humor, something he established all the way back in the 70s and 80s with his comedies. In this movie, he plays a very dramatic role, but at the same time uses his humor as a way to build his character. And a lot of times, he actually uses his humor to mask the kind of loneliness that he feels. 
So there's a, always a very bittersweet sense of humor that's going on with Bill Murray that really fits both his 70s, 80s comic persona and a more dramatic approach to performing. And Scarlett Johansson in this movie, she's very young in this movie. So young in fact that her mother actually had to be on set while they were filming. That's how young she was, which makes it all the more impressive that she managed to pull off such a layered performance. Because it's a Sofia Coppola film, and in her films, usually the characters are very subdued emotionally. They don't show their emotions, their face, usually they just keep it inside. And her characters are quiet and soft-spoken. And if you've seen any interviews of Sofia Coppola, it's actually quite similar to her actual personality. And in this movie, Scarlett Johansson, even at such a young age, managed to pull off that kind of performance that I think really Sofia Coppola envisioned, and that is extremely impressive. So both of these great performances and this great sense of location makes Lost in Translation one of my favorite films of all time. The next movie I'm talking about by Sofia Coppola is Mary Antoinette. This is a movie that is about that queen during the French Revolution. And the movie doesn't treat Mary Antoinette's character as a queen. It doesn't treat her as the queen of France. Rather, it just treats her as a girl who is helpless in this situation. Which actually, there's a truth in that. That she really is just a girl. Underneath all of that, she's just a teenage girl going through her adolescent years. And that is something that Sofia Coppola is really good at at exploring the female adolescence and she does that in the, in this movie but just in a different way since this is a period drama and also Kirsten Dunst in this movie is fantastic I apologize prior for maybe mispronouncing her name I don't really know how to pronounce her name but Kirsten Dunst in this movie is really good this is her second time working with Sofia Coppola after the Virgin Suicides and almost the entirety of this film rests on her shoulders because a lot of times in a Sofia Coppola film there's always a central relationship maybe a friendship or a father-daughter relationship but there's none of that in this movie almost the entirety of this movie is just based on this one character and that's why Kirsten Dunst is very important and she really pulls it off this is Sofia Coppola's longest film to date and it is also one of the most gripping films that I have ever seen by Sofia Coppola, largely thanks to the performances. Also, this is a very glamorous movie. This movie has some fantastic costume design, set design, makeup, all of that stuff is just fantastic in this movie, the art direction and all that. And this is just a very glamorous movie, definitely Sofia Coppola's most glamorous movie. And they actually filmed this movie at where Mary Antoinette actually lived, which is really cool. And if you're just looking for a historical epic, this is not that kind of movie. This is a deep, intimate character study in a way that we have never seen before of this character. Also, there is a really good punk rock soundtrack, surprisingly. Nobody thought of putting a punk rock soundtrack in a period drama. But for some reason, Sofia Coppola thought of it, and it actually fits the character really well. Next film I'm talking about is Somewhere. This movie stars Stephen Dorff and Al Fanning, and I think that more than any other Sofia Coppola movie, possibly even Mary Antoinette, this movie relies heavily on the acting and the performances. Because this is definitely Sofia Coppola's most stripped back approach to filmmaking. This is extremely minimalistic approach. There is nothing unnecessary in this movie. And really, there, there's, there's no bells and whistles. It's just this relationship. That's all this movie is about. It's just a relationship between a father and his daughter. That's all this movie is about. And this all this movie needs to be. And Stephen Dorff and Al Fanning have great chemistry in this movie and their father-daughter relationship really elevates this movie and it's a really touching relationship that I think the audience could really hook themselves to. And Stephen Dorff, who I'm not really familiar with, gives out a very great dramatic performance in this movie and I hope to see him do dramatic acting more, although I'm aware that he has a film called Embattled, which I haven't seen yet, 
I think it was released last year and I'm looking forward to watching that movie. He's really good in this movie though because his performance is very subdued as always with Sofia Coppola's characters and I just didn't really expect that kind of performance from him. Also, Elle Fanning, one of the best actresses of the younger generation, hands down. She's adorable, she's lovable, she's very likable in this movie and I think her character traits are meant to offset the imperfections of Stephen Dorff's character. This movie does take its time, uh, I have to say this. This movie is a slow movie and it's a very patient and observant movie and a lot of times a movie is just observing these characters. It's just observing these characters from a distance and that's all the movie is about. But if this sounds like your kind of movie, then go ahead and try it. I think it's one of the most personal movies that Sofia Coppola has ever made and it feels very intimate. Now I'm talking about two movies in rapid succession. The first movie is The Bling Ring. I think this is just an okay movie and it's definitely the worst movie in Sofia Coppola's entire body of work. But that doesn't mean it's bad. I think it's an okay movie. I, I like the cast of this movie. I liked Emma Watson, Teresa Farmiga. I think they are great actresses with a promising road ahead of them. But also, this movie lacks material. And this movie just doesn't have enough material to fill out the runtime. But then the runtime isn't really that long either. It's a pretty short movie. The next film is The Beguiled, which I also do not know how to pronounce. The Beguiled. So, this movie is very different from the other Sofia Coppola films. Very, very different. This movie is more like a thriller than a drama, and I was going into this movie expecting something relaxing, something chill, like the usual Sofia Coppola stuff. But it's not chill, it's not relaxing, and it stressed me out. And I was so depressed, and so just at the edge of my seat during the entire movie. But it, because it's different doesn't mean it's bad. I think this is a great movie. Will I watch it again? Probably not. This is a very uncomfortable movie. But I think that's what Sofia Coppola is going for. She's trying to make this really uncomfortable thriller. And I think she succeeded at doing so. Just keep in mind it's not like the other Sofia Coppola movies. And here we are at her most recent movie, On the Rocks. On the Rocks is nothing too different really. It's, it's not a big innovation. It's not a big step from Sofia Coppola's previous films. But what it is, is an example of a director who has mastered her own style. This movie shows how far we have come since 1999. Sofia Coppola's style has also matured throughout these years and her characters and her world has matured alongside her and this whole movie just feels like the work of a, a matured director and really this this movie feels like it could only be made by Sofia Coppola after years and years of honing her craft. Same goes to Bill Murray in this movie. Bill Murray is also a veteran in show business and this is him at the top of his game with the sort of experience and effortlessness that could only come from years and years of training. Rashida Jones in this movie is also really charming. This is a very charming, likable movie. It is nothing really big. It's not going to blow you away, but it's a solid, uh, happy, and just a fun movie. And, and it just works. And it, I don't think it has to be anything other than that. I think it just works this way. And this movie also has a great sense of location, as always, with a Sofia Coppola film. And also this movie, despite not having any big changes, actually shows Sofia Coppola taking a more accessible approach to filmmaking. This is definitely her most accessible film yet. Most of her films are just quiet and slow uh, and observant, but this film actually has a pretty good story. Most of her films don't even have a story, so it is pretty impressive. There's nothing wrong with Sofia Coppola's movies not having any story because they are just so driven by characters. But for this movie, it's a breath of fresh air for anybody who has seen a lot of Sofia Coppola's films. And also there's even an action sequence thrown somewhere in there, a car chase, which really surprised me considering it's a, an extreme rarity in Sofia Coppola's films. But yeah, those small changes go a long way. But really, when it comes to the big changes, there's nothing really that 
different about On The Rocks but you should still watch it because it shows a master director at work and master actors at work as well everybody's just at the top of their games to make a movie that is just fun and lightweight and enjoyable so those are uh, all of Sofia Coppola's films I believe and this is just a director I really admire and I hope you check out her work